Good morning, ESM. I'm not Luke. And neither am I. We are, however, both in this year's musical, Grease. That we are, Aiden. But more on that after news and announcements. Yesterday, Ozzy, the world's oldest male gorilla, passed away at age 61. Ozzy, a western lowland silverback, was found dead by his care team at Zoo Atlanta that morning. The cause of death is unknown, but over the last 24 hours, Ozzy had been treated for face swelling, weakness, and inability to drink or eat. He was one of the 13 gorillas at the zoo who tested positive for COVID-19 last year. Officials said at the time they believed the apes contracted it from a zoo worker who was asymptomatic. They had been, ho they had been fully vaccinated and wearing protective equipment. The zoo Atlanta has said it would release the results of Ozzy's nec necropsy after completed by the University of Jatoria's Veterinary College. The original voice of Charlie Brown, Peter Robbins, committed suicide last week. Robbins, whose real name was Louis G. Nancy, began voicing Charles M. Schultz's crea created character, Charlie Brown, when he was nine years old, contributing to the 1960s Peanuts show and the classic holiday movies, Charlie Brown Christmas, and it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. Scott McGuire, who helped run a Peanuts history website called FiveCentsPlease.org, told to Associated Press that Robbins has been the definitive version of Charlie Brown. Since the character was adapted into films and television, the producers struggled to find actors who could match his voice. Robbins also appeared on TV shows like Blondie, Rawhide, The Munsters, The Donna Reed Show, Get Smart, and My Three Sons. According to the New York Post, Robbins struggled with lifelong mental illness and addiction to prescription drugs and alcohol, plus a number of legal issues. A memorial service for Robbins will be held at a future date, according to the TV station. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, like Aiden mentioned, we are both in Greece, and in the musical, I play Vince Fontaine, who is a TV personality, and he goes to the school uh, to see the dance competition and be the judge. And I play Kaniki, who is one of the burger boys in the musical, and Danny's best friend. But, we're not just going to talk about ourselves the whole time. But definitely a majority of the show will be about us. Oh, definitely. Uh, and we'll be able to get some publicity for the show, which is uh, March 10th, 11th, and 12th, by the way. But we're getting distracted. We actually want to come on today and tell you guys a little about the background for Greece and the time period it takes place in. So Greece is a movie musical that was made in the 1970s but takes place in the 1950s. It stars John Travolta as Danny Zuko and Olivia Newton-John as Sandy, and that's both of our characters. In the musical, however, Todd Durantini and Grace and Kakamo are playing these iconic parts. Greece is about two lovers in high school, those two, who meet in the summer and then are reacquainted later in the year at school. And then they find out that their school is going to be on TV and be in a dance competition. But the difference in Danny and Sandy's cliques start to pull them apart until the end where, of course, they figure everything out. So after weather, we're going to head over to the whiteboard and tell you some more about the 50s. Today is going to be sunny with a high of 16 degrees and a low of 2 degrees. Tomorrow is going to be partly cloudy with a high of 29 degrees and a low of 22. There will also be some snow showers in the evening. Friday will have a high of 26 and a low of negative 1 degrees. Now, like we said, Greece takes place in the 50s, but was written in the 70s. The 50s were a pretty whack couple of years. They consisted mainly of Elvis, greasy hair, leather jackets, letterman jackets, cars, civil rights, hairspray, and the Cold War. Oh, don't forget, lots of dancing, the birth of rock and roll, and also the golden age of television. So yeah, there were some wack years. Yeah. And now, some major, some major historical events that happened in the 50s. First up, we got the Korean War, which wasn't great. No, it was not. It was not a great time. <laughs> and of course, we got to have some TV facts in there. So 1951, 
not only started Color TV, but marked the first time that a television program was broadcast coast to coast. And then in 1952, the polio vaccine came out, and also President Dwight Eisenhower was elected. Uh, Eisenhower worked through most of the Cold War to try and keep things cool. See, see what I did there? Because he, you know, he no. is the Cold War, he kept it cool. No. No? Oh, all right. Yeah. All right, so anyway, uh, in 1953, the Rosenbergs were executed. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, we also discovered the DNA double helix. I don't think that's how you draw it. No, I don't. And I don't really have a joke for that one, so we're just going to kind of move on past that. Uh, All th right. To the next five years, which pretty much consisted of space stuff, Sputnik, moon landing, things like that. Um, there was Cold War stuff, Fidel Castro, who was in Cuba. And then there was some civil rights stuff. Uh, there was Rosa Parks and bus boycotts. There was Brown versus Board of Education. Very, very important. And then also with pop culture, we got Elvis Presley rising to fame and also Legos, Legos. in 1958. Who doesn't love Legos? A lot of hurt feet by that. So. There's also some very interesting sports stuff going on too. Exactly. Um, so baseball and boxing were the most popular sports of all time at this point, and football and golf were just starting to rise. New York pretty much owned the baseball game with the Yankees, Brooklyn Dodgers, and the Giants winning the World Series pretty much every year. Speaking of sports, let's head over to sports. That would be a pretty good transition, huh? Yeah, it would. Bowling teams lost to Auburn yesterday 2-1. For the boys, Luke Liedka led the team with the highest score in 659 points. For the girls, Olivia Nissen scored 450 points. Last night, the girls basketball team lost to Oneida 50-26. Angelina Polcaro and Anaya Jones both scored six points for the team. The volleyball team defeated Chenango on senior night to improve their record to 13-2. This breaks an eight-year losing streak with Chenango. Laura Sitnik had 11 kills, 4 aces, and 14 digs. Margaret Madding had 10 kills and 1 ace, while Emma Tallarico recorded 4 blocks. Akwakwani also recorded 5 kills and 4 blocks. Natalie Pearson had 27 assists, 4 aces, and 1 kill. Today is the 2-year anniversary of NBA star Kobe Bryant's tragic passing in the Calabasas helicopter crash, as well as his daughter Gigi and 7 others. In upcoming news, girls and boys bowling has a match at 3.30 at Oswego. Boys basketball plays at home against Whitesboro at 6. Girls volleyball plays at New Hartford at 7. And wrestling has their senior night tonight at home against Auburn at 6. And I am Luke with their sports. Well, I hope you guys are excited to watch the show as we were to do it. And like we said earlier, the show dates are March 10th, 11th, and there are two shows on the 12th. On that note, from me. Me. And everyone else here at the morning show. Keep rocking and rolling and whatnot. 